drive and a rejection by Broome. There's one reason the numbers aren't high at the rim. Almond, one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. And now Jalen Williams tees it up and knocks it down. Really good job by Auburn. Swing, swing. And that ball got to that high slot on the initial transition push. And bam, swing it one more swing. Wide open for Jalen Williams. Williams hit 5 of 7 from deep in the win against Mississippi State. Fountain in the paint. Another Auburn block. 15% of opponents' twos get sent the other way when they're playing Auburn. Auburn led the nation last year in block shots. An athletic team that just harasses the ball when you get it inside. Well, window Green's got the guts they'll need to take and make hard shots. Yeah, tough angle, and he's able to get it to go. 14 of his 17 against State came in the second half on Saturday. Williams over Brule. Got it right in his eye. This will be a fun matchup tonight to watch between four and orange and 12 and white. Yeah, really a pretty good job by four and orange to take up the airspace of Williams. But you're talking about a 6'10 kid with a high release can make guarded threes. He's shooting 12% better from deep this year than he was last year in the OBC. Wow. Green draws the foul on the chaser Justice Williams, and that is the second on Justice Williams. How about Auburn defending the rim? Well, they're only Auburn averaging three blocks right now per game in conference play. But typically they're around that six or seven blocks average, and their defense has triggered their offense. The answer for LSU is K.J. Williams. Talked about him averaging 15 points a game in SEC play. Probably gets to 20 tonight if that three ball continues to fall. But there will be a lot of switching out on number 12 in white, especially late clock. This is a guy that loves to set go screens to a pop and shoot the three ball late. Green's got another free throw coming his way. LSU will have to sit Justice Williams. He's got two more free throws coming instead. And Trey Hannibal set to check in. I had a great visit with Wendell after shoot around today. You know, he had that really bad game against Georgia. Didn't shoot the ball well. 0 for 6 from 3. 6 for 15 since then. And I said, who do you turn to? How do you help? Find help when things aren't going well. He said, well, my dad reminded me. Believe in yourself. Believe in what you want. And he said, but the first thing I did, I shut down social media. Good for and, him. And that time, instead of being in the toxic culture of Twitter and getting all this feedback, positive and negative, he goes, now I watch more film. He said, I watched the entire KUK State game last night. Well, that's how you learn ball. And John Calipari, he took all the phones from his players prior to the, the game at Tennessee on that Friday night before the game on Saturday. The game at Tennessee on that Friday night before the game on Saturday. Yeah, the, the mistakes that Wendell Green makes is not because he's soft. And that is a tough, competitive dude that sometimes gets a little too competitive and gets too deep. Man, I love his game. He's hard to guard for a 5'10 kid. They get off, got off K.J. Williams, but he couldn't knock down the three. One of two from deep. Auburn typically, man, they run that offense high up on the floor. Really try to spread you out and open up for those middle drives. Shuffle cuts are always in play. The isolation this time goes to Williams. Well, jump hook off the mark, and the rebound yanked down by Cam Hayes. We've been dealing with an injury a couple of games ago. Didn't play against Florida. Injured first half against A&M the game prior. Flying rebound by Jalen Williams. Auburn three for five here, five here early on from the floor. That is... Tempo reliant, up tempo reliant as some of Pearl's teams in the past. They're willing to use clock and find their best shot. Shoot it. Ball fake got him free, but left it short. Tommy should have shot the first time. A little yep. bit of hesitation. And then challenge, and the block will turn into a jump ball and send us. The block will turn into a jump ball and send us for a break. And when we return, we'll take a look at the roads traveled from the OBC to the SEC, the key players in tonight's game. This is the thing when Mac McMahon got the job here, there was basically nobody on the roster, so he bought a bunch of his racers with them, the Baton Rouge, and now meeting up with a formal uh, former rival in Janai Broad. And 
not the only ones with some OVC flavor. Wendell Green, when he was at EKU, had 24 points and eight assists in a game against Murray State. And Broom, in that championship game, Jimmy, with a trip to the tournament on the line, went for 32 and eight head to head with KJ Williams. Yeah, all those guys have transferred up in terms of level of play, and their game has transferred as well. Very productive and a massive athletic SEC. You know, I think part of the reason the SEC in particular is so hard to predict this year, KD, KD Johnson on the floor too for Auburn right now, is that there's so many guys who have transferred up, whether that be from the MAC or the Valley or OVC, whatever it is, and it's really hard to predict exactly who's going to have success at this level. It is, and that's you, know, you go as deep as you can when you're talking to guys about bringing them in and how did they play when they weren't at their best? What was their body language like? And Eric Musselman from Arkansas was out in front of that when he's at Nevada, but man, all those coaches now are going digging as deep as they can. I know one thing: you got to be an athlete to transfer up in this league. LSU hadn't scored in the last two plus minutes, so Adam Miller is off the mark. He was at LSU last year, but recovering from a torn ACL after he transferred from Brad Underwood's squad at Illinois. LSU's first shot defense has been pretty solid in conference play. It's their inability to clean up the glass has caused them all kinds of issues. And Auburn, we know, Bruce Pearl, their, their life support breath is on the offensive glass. They get 36% of their misses. That's 14th best in the country. A late shot, and again, Auburn using just about everything on the shot clock. Trey Hannibal a little bit off balance. Talking with Matt McMahon today about his approach after that Alabama loss. 106-66, it really didn't feel that close because that was the margin in the first half. He said, I've never had to deal with anything yeah. like that. But he was so encouraged by the energy that his team has brought to practice since then. I thought it was electric today. I thought they were alive. They, they, but to me, oh, wow. They, LSU practiced like a team that's lost four in a row. What do I mean by that? There was an urgency, man. They were talking the action. Every call was echoed throughout the entire gym. And Mac McMahon is a winner. This is a mid-major grinder that has jumped into the SEC and, like you said, had to completely rebuild a roster. And he was the first one to admit today, if nothing else tonight, we better play with that Murray State mentality, that foundation that we laid and I'm trying to build here. Won 75% of his games with the Racers and had three tournament trips. Would have been a fourth outside of the COVID year. Dylan Cardwell at the free throw line for Auburn. And you mentioned that Alabama team. You know Alabama is the best team in the country. When Charles Barkley, an Auburn grad, says Alabama is the best team in the country. And that's what he said today. It takes a, a, a big Auburn man to admit that. But the Chuckster is right. Well, those NBA guys are paying attention to what Alabama has, specifically Brandon Miller, who's likely going to be the first college player taken in the NBA draft. I, I would take Brandon Miller from college as my first pick. My second pick would be Grady Dick. I, I think he's built for that league. And I've had other NBA scouts say, I don't know if I'd take him second, maybe third or fourth, but just watch how high that kid for Kansas goes. To be clear, you're talking about among college players. Among college yeah. players. Well, Joe Lenardi has released his latest bracketology, and after that big win against Georgia last night, Kentucky went from out to in. Auburn sitting as a seven seed right now when they had that run to the Final Four a few years ago. They did it as a five seed. And Alabama doesn't put one selfish dude on the floor. And they've got talented enough guys that could get a little selfish, but that's not how they're wired. Now remember when Auburn made their run to the Final Four with four games to go in the regular season? They were a bubble team. Yeah. Hannibal's game is built on the drive, and he's able to pick up a foul on Jani Broome, and that'll take the former racer and one-time Gamecock to the free throw line. And Tom, Tom Hannibal thrives against a defense that stays attached to shooters, and they aren't gap heavy because he just needs a little bit of a crease. Auburn typically stays attached to shooters. Hannibal could get downhill tonight because of it. 66% from the free throw line this season for Hannibal, who's a senior out of Elliott, South Carolina, out of Hartsville High School. 
Got a huge day of college basketball headed your way Saturday on ESPN. Starting off with number 17 Miami visiting Cameron Indoor to take on Duke at noon Eastern. Then Oscar Shibway in Kentucky play host to Texas A&M. We'll be a rough for that one at 2 Eastern. Both games on ESPN and the app. Oscar Shibway had 37 points and 24 rebounds last night. Jimmy, I know you know this because you were there. He had 23 and 15 in the second half. Well, Zach Eady right now, it's it's his to lose in terms of the National Player of the Year. But I think Oscar Shibway now jumped up to that next guy from his performance last night. The odds makers say the same thing. Zach Eady, Oscar Shibway, Jalen Wilson, Drew Timmy, those are your top four guys in terms of the National Player of the Year right now in the middle of January. I didn't hear Brandon Miller's name. Yeah, he's, he's climbing the charts. Leo Berman for yeah. three, and he knocks it down. I think Auburn. Three, and he knocks it down. I think Auburn needs to play Leo Berman maybe a little bit more. He's a rock-solid defensive guy. You have to guard him. The defensive guy, you have to guard him. He's a catch-and-stick shooter. He fights the Auburn way, and Bruce Pearl is starting to grow his minutes because of it. Here's Hannibal. The, the word Pearl used today when talking about Berman's playing time was trust. He has yeah. great trust in him to put him on the floor. Here's Katie Johnson into traffic. And he just barreled right through. That's like trying to fight down Perkins Avenue traffic at 5 o'clock on a Baton Rouge Friday. Robbins racing. He'll be at the free throw line with Auburn on top by eight. Jason to the PMAC here. First time for those guys. Tonight, Broome probably said they don't have something like that in the OBC, but Auburn rain in threes once again, Jimmy. That's a huge part of their game right now. They, Auburn only shooting 30% from the three-point line on the year. They didn't shoot the ball well last year either. So if Auburn gets around 38 to 40% from that three-point line, that's really good news. And for Auburn tonight, it's been three different guys that have made a three. It's not one guy right now seeing a good rim. One guy right now seeing a good rim. And if you're LSU, you've got to get up and force Auburn to do stuff off the bounce. What, what out of bounds play. Yeah, Berman, really nice good. Cut. Largest lead of the game so far for the Tigers. I'm not going to say Bruce Pearl is the best in the league out of timeouts, but there's not one better. He is so good at scouting and going right at defenders off those out of bounds. Who would be the first coach to text you? Who would be the first coach to text you if you did say he was Yeah, exactly. Watch Burby. He's going to pop in the corner. And that old Tom Davis shuffle cut that Bruce Pearl has gone to time after time after time. They spread you out. They shuffle cut hard. Berman that time the recipient of the play. Assistant coach at Iowa for Dr. Tom Davis back in the 80s. Hannibal is not a three-point threat. He is a driver. And we'll get a whistle and a foul. I think it was after the shot. You have to make Hannibal a passer, Tom. Get heavy in the gaps on the kid because he's thinking drive to score, drive to score, drive to score. He's not a drive to pass guy, and when he does, he gets a little careless with it. To your point, he's not a three-point shooter. You can't back completely off of him because now he's got a full head of steam coming at you, but he has to see a second and third set of eyes behind his primary defender. You labeled him a bowling ball when we had him on Saturday. Yeah, that's what he is. A He's the ball, and the defenders are the pins. Fitting here at LSU. Ken Lowe spent some time in the bowling alley. <laughs> he has. Superstar SID, the legend. Of Auburn's makes, three of the five have come from deep. Berman double, had to double clutch and find Williams. Bailed him out. Tonight, Broom with the offensive board. Stripped away by Williams. Tigers have missed their last five field goal attempts. Trying to find some rhythm on this end. Early threes off. It's a really tough shot. The defense never had to move. The ball never got from one side to the other. Oh! Big time blocked by Williams and Katie Johnson. And it will be LSU basketball. And where is LSU's offense going to come from? Because K.J. Williams can't get any free looks. Katie Johnson has one speed, one speed only, and it's all gas, no brakes. Sometimes good news, sometimes not. But this kid's got to get free. But Auburn and Tom are doing a good job of switching out on him on most of his ghost screen actions, actions that free him up. Explain a ghost screen quick. It, it, it's basically it's a fake screen 
or a blow-by screen. There's a lot of different terminologies, but it's a fake screen just like that action right there. And Broom sticks with the action really well. Williams way too strong on the jump hook. That is the shot that Auburn wants K.J. Williams to take. All night long, let him take that shot. Katie Johnson directing traffic. Wendell Green not on the floor right now for this Auburn team. Broom, tough angle. And it's rebounded by Justice Williams. Playing with two fouls here in the first half. Williams coming off career high nine against Alabama, and he floats it in. You cannot open up your hips like not open up your hips like Katie Johnson just did. And he was all alone by himself. The corner was empty. He had no help. And KD Johnson, instead of staying squared up, a blow by. Paint touch for Williams. And the miss brought down by Jalen Reed. Nobody picks up Reed. LSU has three made buckets tonight. One reason for the low assist total, but still only one assist so far for LSU. Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff off the bounce. Here's what I'm talking about, the blow by. Watch, Wayne, watch the hips open up right here by Katie Johnson. The corner's empty. He has no help to his right side. And you got to square him up and force that ball back to where your defensive help is already built in. LSU, one for its last nine, make it one for ten. Shooting just 19% in the scheme. Wendell Green Jr. back on the floor. And he's looking for movement. Nobody was moving. Shot clock at 10. Flanagan with two. Williams after the ball fake. Second time he's hesitated, Jimmy, when it looked like he should have pulled the trigger and, immediately. And second time he's missed because of it. And Bruce Pearl has challenged Jalen Williams to step up and be the guy. And be that aggressive scorer that thinks I'm getting 20 every night. And the guy that's hesitating on two, on two clean jump shots is not a guy mentally right now thinking I'm going to get 20. He had 21 against Mississippi State. Most of those coming in the first half. It was a 69-63 Auburn win. We're on pace to be less scoring than that one in this evening's game. KJ Williams oh, banks okay. it in. Hey, they, they, they don't ask how, ask how it's how many. <laughs> Just a little bit of a pop out by KJ Williams. Auburn is so good at no middle with the balls on the side. Seven nothing LSU run. Here's Green around the screen from Cardwell. Yeah, screen, re-screen, act screen, action for Wendell Green. Really a good two-man game on the first side of the floor. And Miller blows by him, and they're going to get Jalen Williams for the foul, which will be his first. So what is LSU doing? They're struggling with their half-court offense. So now they're really starting to increase their speed in their transition offense to get some early ones before the Tigers from Orange get their defense set. They're both Tigers tonight. Oh, one I white, one orange. That. K.J. Williams is stuffing the stat sheet tonight. He's got eight points. He's nailed a couple of threes. He's doing a little bit of everything for Matt McMahon's squad. Tommy's a classic mismatch guy. Tommy's a classic mismatch guy because on paper, he's their starting five guy, but he plays the four. Defensively, you want your four guy on K.J. Williams because of his ability, his ability to drive the ball, knock down shots from the three. Who's Auburn's four guys? Jalen Williams, their leading scorer. At least Bruce Pearl says Bruce Pearl says that's who I need to have my leading score. So there's a mismatch all night long right now assigned to KJ Williams. He's got eight points. Can he get to 20, 22? It feels like LSU's got to have that type of number from him tonight if they're going to win this game. An entry pass ends up in the backcourt and over and back. 
And now Williams is on him. So Bruce Pearl says, I can't let 12 continue to go. And my best offensive player is going to have to play some defense. KJ Williams finds it, goes over Cardwell. And it's rebounded by the little sky on the floor. 48% LSU layups and dunks. And tonight, Jimmy, one for seven at the rim. That's a crazy number. Green live. Cardwell! Wow, he came out of Lafayette to throw that one down. Bruce Pearl has won the ATOs so far in this game. If that was the first offensive possession for Auburn coming out of that timeout. Cardwell from an empty corner with a naked roll. Rolls uncovered to the rim. Stay down on the shot fake of Miller, right? And an LSU turnover. Tom, watch, watch Cardwell. This is a, a, an empty side ball screen. A naked rim run for Cardwell because there's no help coming out because the, there's no help coming out of the corner. And 44 makes him play in a really nice pass. Biggest alley oop in college basketball was Keontae Johnson throwing it down last night oh, for wow. K State. How good is it to see that guy? One of our buddies from Florida back Come, on the floor and playing well. Comeback story of the year. It is. In all of sports. In all of sports. A couple of years ago, he was a preseason SEC player of the year. It's the third time Auburn has used a good chunk of the shot clock, and Green was unaware. Fourth turnover. Watch Cardwell again. This is out of the timeout. The pass is tremendous, Tom, because Green is going to his left and has to throw it back to his right just a little bit. Good shooters are good passers in that situation, and Green checks both of those boxes. Green fifth in the league, 3.8 assists a game. At a Detroit Country Day, then Lalu Mir in Indiana before going to Eastern Kentucky and finding his way to the loveliest village on the plains. Cardwell now back on K.J. Williams. Man, the shooting of LSU. I'm sure has Matt McMahon thinking, what in the world are we doing? Four for 20 to start this game. Part of his tie to shot selection, part of his tie to Auburn's active hot switch outs. But you have got to get Auburn moving, Tom, and try to attack Auburn off of a closeout. Two for nine from three, one for seven at the rim. Can't find their sweet spot. The flex cut to isolation for Flanagan to get him to that right shoulder. Got and him for a hook, right? Yep. And that's the first on Allen Flanagan. He's been big for Auburn, though, in four straight games and double figures. And he catches the ball right there on that low block off of that flex action. Bruce Pearl can use big guards as that cutter, and now they become a post-up threat. Flanagan had... 10 points in their matchup last year. He and Wendell Green both had big games against LSU. Ball lost on his way up by Cam Hayes. Shot clock at six. Hannibal. Hannibal. Nowhere to go. I saw Auburn recently against Arkansas a couple of weeks ago, and they simply packed in a 2-3 zone, dared Arkansas to shoot over the top of it, and the Razorbacks couldn't get to the rim. Now, this is man, but it's very similar in that LSU just keeps running into dead ends. Yeah, and it's going to continue to shrink because of LSU's shooting numbers that you've talked about. And Auburn, look what they do now defensively. And I, I think I know they are very good at guarding the bounce Getting their elbows, Tom, by their ears and showing their hands. And any contact that occurs might be with their chest, but they don't do a lot of fouling in one on one with their hands. They're very well schooled. Like I said, they keep the ball on the side as well as anybody in the SEC. I hate that the folks at home couldn't see you actually put your elbows by yeah. your ears when you're discussing it. If you show me doing it, please don't have the camera behind me. <laughs> For different reasons that we'll break down later in the show. <laughs> Here's Flanagan. That's a three. Oh, wow. yeah. Confident is Alan Flanagan. Getting closer and closer back to that pre-Achilles form. Man, the step back and the elevation straight up was really well done. A lot of guys step back in the fade. His step back was pure up and down in a phone booth. 
handful of people watching right now wondering what a phone booth is, Jimmy. That's true, too. <laughs> and an LSU turnover. They're second. Watch Flanagan. He jabs with the right and then steps back into his shot. The jab, boom, actually jab with his left and step back. But once he steps back, Tommy steps back on balance. So it's a quick move, boom. But on balance now, straight up, straight down, really well done by 22 in orange. So they used to have these things called pay phones. Yep. If you had a quarter, maybe back in the day a dime, you could step into the phone booth, put your money in, call your friends. Yeah. There was no Instagram on those pay phones. Oh, ask for directions. <laughs> That's right. Right? <laughs> Where's the nearest map store? Auburn leads LSU by double digits. Under four to go here in the first half from Baton Rouge. When Mac McMahon got the job here, there was basically nobody on the roster, so he bought a bunch of his racers with them to Baton Rouge. And now meeting up with a formal, uh, former rival in Janai Brown. Not the only ones with some OVC flavor. Wendell Green, when he was at EKU, had 24 points and eight assists in a game against Murray State. And Broom, in that championship game, Jimmy, with a trip to the tournament on the line, went for 32 and eight head to head with KJ Williams. Yeah, all those guys have transferred up in terms of level of play, and their game has transferred as well. Very productive and a massive athletic SEC. You know, I think part of the reason the SEC in particular is so hard to predict this year, KD, KD Johnson on the floor too for Auburn right now, is that there's so many guys who have transferred up, whether that be from the MAC or the Valley or OVC, whatever it is. And it's really hard to predict exactly who's going to have success at this level. It is. And that's, you know, you go as deep as you can when you're talking to guys about bringing them in and. How did they play when they weren't at their best? What was their body language like? And Eric Musselman from Arkansas was out in front of that when he's at Nevada, but man, all those coaches now are going, digging as deep as they can. I know one thing, you got to be an athlete to transfer up in this league. LSU hadn't scored in the last two plus minutes, so Adam Miller is off the mark. He was at LSU last year, but recovering from a torn ACL after he transferred from Brad Underwood's squad at Illinois. LSU's first shot defense has been pretty solid in conference play. It's their inability to clean up the glass has caused them all kinds of issues. And Auburn, we know, Bruce Pearl, their, their life support breath is on the offensive glass. They get 36% of their misses. That's 14th best in the country, a late shot. And again, Auburn using just about everything on the shot clock. Trey Hannibal a little bit off balance. Talk with Matt McMahon today about his approach after that Alabama loss. 106 66. It really didn't feel that close because that was the margin in the first half. And he said, I've never had to deal with anything yeah. like that. But he was so encouraged by the energy that his team has brought to practice since then. I thought it was electric today. I thought they were alive. They, they, but to me, oh, wow. They, LSU practiced like a team that's lost four in a row. What do I mean by that? There was an urgency, man. They were talking the action. Every call was echoed throughout the entire gym. And Mac McMahon is a winner. This is a mid-major grinder that has jumped into the SEC and, like you said, had to completely rebuild the roster. And he was the first one to admit today, if nothing else tonight, we better play with that Murray State mentality, that foundation that we laid and I'm trying to build here. Won 75% of his games with the Racers and had three tournament trips. Would have been a fourth outside of the COVID year. Dylan Cardwell at the free throw line for Auburn. And you mentioned that Alabama team. You know Alabama is the best team in the country. When Charles Barkley, an Auburn grad, says Alabama is the best team in the country. And that's what he said today. It takes a, a, a big Auburn man to admit that. But the Chuckster is right. Well, those NBA guys are paying attention to what Alabama has, specifically Brandon Miller, who's likely going to be the first college player taken in the NBA draft. I, I would take Brandon Miller from college as my first pick. My second pick would be Grady Dick. I, I think he's built for that league. And I've had other NBA scouts say, 
I don't know if I'd take him second, maybe third or fourth, but just watch how high that kid for Kansas goes. To be clear, you're talking about among college players. Among college yeah. players. Well, Joe Lenardi has released his latest bracketology, and after that big win against Georgia last night, Kentucky went from out to in. Auburn sitting as a seven seed right now when they had that run to the Final Four a few years ago. They did it as a five seed. And Alabama doesn't put one selfish dude on the floor. And they got talented enough guys that could get a little selfish, but that's not how they're wired. Now remember when Auburn made their run to the Final Four with four games to go in the regular season? They were a bubble team. Yeah. Hannibal's game is built on the drive, and he's able to pick up a foul on Janai Broom, and that'll take the former racer and one-time Gamecock to the free throw line. And Tom, Tom Hannibal thrives against a defense that stays attached to shooters, and they aren't gap heavy because he just needs a little bit of a crease. Auburn typically stays attached to shooters. Hannibal could get downhill tonight because of it. 66% from the free throw line this season for Hannibal, who's a senior out of Elliott, South Carolina, out of Hartsville High School. Got a huge day of college basketball headed your way Saturday on ESPN, starting off with number 17 Miami, visiting Cameron Indoor to take on Duke at noon Eastern. Then Oscar Sheboy in Kentucky play host to Texas A&M. We'll be at Rupp for that one at 2 Eastern, both games on ESPN and the app. Oscar Sheboy had 37 points and 24 rebounds last night. Jimmy, I know you know this because you were there. He had 23 and 15 in the second half. Well, Zach Eady right now, it's it's his to lose in terms of the National Player of the Year. But I think Oscar Sheboy now jumped up to that next guy from his performance last night. The odds makers say the same thing. Zach Eady, Oscar Sheboy, Jalen Wilson, Drew Timmy, those are your top four guys in terms of the National Player of the Year right now in the middle of January. I didn't hear Brandon Miller's name. Yeah, he's, he's climbing the charts. Leo Berman for yeah. three, and he knocks it down. I think Auburn. Three, and he knocks it down. I think Auburn needs to play Leo Berman maybe a little bit more. He's a rock-solid defensive guy. You have to guard him. The defensive guy. You have to guard him. He's a catch-and-stick shooter. He fights the Auburn way, and Bruce Pearl is starting to grow his minutes because of it. Here's Hannibal. The word Pearl used today when talking about Berman's playing time was trust. He has yeah. great trust in him to put him on the floor. Here's Katie Johnson into traffic. He just barreled right through. That's like trying to fight down Perkins Avenue traffic at 5 o'clock on a Baton Rouge Friday. Robbins racing. He'll be at the free throw line with Auburn on top by eight. Jason to the PMAC here. First time for those guys. Tonight, Broome probably said they don't have something like that in the OBC, but Auburn raining threes once again, Jimmy. That's a huge part of their game right now. They, Auburn only shooting 30% from the three-point line on the year. They didn't shoot the ball well last year either. So if Auburn gets around 38 to 40% from that three-point line, that's really good news. And for Auburn tonight, it's been three different guys that have made a three. It's not one guy right now seeing a good rim. One guy right now seeing a good rim. And if you're LSU, you've got to get up and force Auburn to do stuff off the bounce. What, what out of bounds play. Yeah, Berman, really nice good. Cut. Largest lead in the game so far for the Tigers. I'm not going to say Bruce Pearl is the best in the league out of timeouts, but there's not one better. He is so good at scouting and going right at defenders off those out of bounds. Who would be the first coach to text you? Who would be the first coach to text you if you did say he was Yeah, exactly. Watch Burby. He's going to pop in the corner. And that old Tom Davis shuffle yep. cut that Bruce Pearl has gone to time after time after time. They spread you out. They shuffle cut hard. Berman, that time, the recipient of the play. Assistant coach at Iowa for Dr. Tom Davis back in the 80s. Hannibal is not a three-point threat. No. He is a driver. And we got a whistle and a foul. I think it was after the shot. You have to make Hannibal a passer, Tom. Get heavy in the gaps on the kid because he's thinking drive to score, drive to score, drive to score. He's not a drive to pass guy, and when he does, he gets a little careless with it. To your point, he's not a three-point shooter. You can't back completely off of him because now he's got a full head of steam coming at you, but he has to see a second and third set of eyes behind his primary defender. 
we labeled him a bowling ball when we had him on Saturday. Yeah, that's what he is. I mean, he's the ball, and the defenders are the pins. Fitting here at LSU. Kent Lowe would spend some time in the bowling alley. <laughs> yes. Superstar SID, the legend. Of Auburn's makes, three of the five have come from deep. Berman double, had to double clutch and find Williams, bailed him out. Then I broom with the offensive board, stripped away by Williams. Tigers have missed their last five field goal attempts, trying to find some rhythm on this end. Early threes off. Just a really tough shot. The defense never had to move. The ball never got from one side to the other. Oh. Time blocked by Williams and Katie Johnson, and it will be LSU basketball. And where is LSU's offense going to come from? Because KJ Williams can't get any free looks. Katie Johnson has one speed, one speed only, and it's all gas, no brakes. Sometimes good news, sometimes not. But this kid's got to get free. But Auburn Tom, they're doing a good job of switching out on him on most of his ghost screen actions, actions that free him up. Explain a ghost screen quick. It, it, it's basically it's a fake screen or a blow by screen. There's a lot of different terminologies, but it's a fake screen just like that action right there. And Broom sticks with the action really well. Williams, way too strong on the jump hook. That is the shot that Auburn wants KJ Williams to take all night long. Let him take that shot. Katie Johnson directing traffic. Wendell Green not on the floor right now for this Auburn team. Broom, tough angle. And it's rebounded by Justice Williams. Playing with two fouls here in the first half. Williams coming off career high nine against Alabama, and he floats it in. You cannot open up your hips like not open up your hips like Katie Johnson just did. And he was all alone by himself. The corner was empty. He had no help. And Katie Johnson, instead of staying squared up, a blow by. Paint touch for Williams. And the miss brought down by Jalen Reed. Nobody picks up Reed. LSU has three made buckets tonight. One reason for the low assist total, but still only one assist so far for LSU. Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff off the bounds. Here's what I'm talking about, the blow by. Watch Williams, watch the hips open up right here by Katie Johnson. The corner's empty, he has no help to his right side. And you gotta square him up and force that ball back to where your defensive help is already built in. LSU one for its last nine, make it one for ten. Shooting just 19% in this game. Wendell Green Jr. back on the floor. And he's looking for movement. Nobody was moving. Shot clock at 10. Flanagan with two. Williams after the ball fake. Second time he's hesitated, Jimmy, when it looked like he should have pulled the trigger and, immediately. And second time he's missed because of it. And Bruce Pearl has challenged Jalen Williams to step up and be the guy. And be that aggressive score that thinks I'm getting 20 every night. And the guy that's hesitating on two, on two clean jump shots is not a guy mentally right now thinking I'm going to get 20. He had 21 against Mississippi State. Most of those coming in the first half. It was a 69-63 Auburn win. We're on pace to be less scoring than that one in this evening's game. KJ Williams oh, banks okay. it in. Hey, they, they, they don't ask how, ask how it's how many. <laughs> Just a little bit of a pop out by KJ Williams. Auburn is so good at no middle when the ball's on the side. Seven nothing LSU run. 
Here's Green around the screen from Cardwell. Yeah, screen, re-screen, act screen, action for Wendell Green. Really a good two-man game on the first side of the floor. And Miller blows by him, and they're going to get Jalen Williams for the foul, which will be his first. So what is LSU doing? They're struggling with their half-court offense. So now they're really starting to increase their speed in their transition offense to get some early ones before the Tigers from Orange get their defense set. They're both Tigers tonight. Oh, one I white, one orange. K.J. Williams is stuff in the stat sheet tonight. He's got eight points. He's nailed a couple of threes. He's doing a little bit of everything for Matt McMahon's squad. Tommy's a classic mismatch guy. Tommy's a classic mismatch guy because on paper, he's their starting five guy, but he plays the four. Defensively, you want your four guy on K.J. Williams because of his ability, his ability to drive the ball, knock down shots from the three. Who's Auburn's four guy? It's Jalen Williams, their leading scorer. At least Bruce Pearl says Bruce Pearl says that's who I need to have my leading score. So there's a mismatch all night long right now assigned to KJ Williams. He's got eight points. Can he get to 20, 22? It feels like LSU's got to have that type of number from him tonight if they're going to win this game. An entry pass ends up in the backcourt, no over and back. And now Williams is on him, so Bruce Pearl says, I can't let 12 continue to go. My best offensive player is going to have to play some defense. A.J. Williams finds it, goes over Cardwell, and it's rebounded by the little sky on the floor. 48% LSU layups and dunks. And tonight, Jimmy, one for seven at the rim. That's a crazy number. Green lob. Cardwell! Wow, he came out of left field. He had to throw that one down. Bruce Pearl has won the ATOs so far in this game. If that was the first offensive possession for Auburn coming out of that timeout. Cardwell from an empty corner with a naked roll, rolls uncovered to the rim. Stay down on the shot fake of Miller, right? And an LSU turnover. Tom, watch, watch Cardwell. This is a, an, an empty side ball screen. A naked rim run for Cardwell because there's no help coming out because there's no help coming out of the corner, and 44 makes him play in a really nice pass. Biggest alley oop in college basketball was Keontae Johnson throwing it down last night oh, for wow. K State. How good is it to see that guy, one of our buddies from Florida, back Come, on the floor and playing well? Comeback story of the year. It is in all of sports. In all of sports. A couple of years ago, he was a preseason SEC Player of the Year. It's the third time Auburn has used a good chunk of the shot clock, and Green was unaware. Fourth turnover. Watch Cardwell again. This is out of the timeout. The pass is tremendous, Tom, because Green is going to his left and has to throw it back to his right just a little bit. Good shooters are good passers in that situation, and Green checks both of those boxes. Green fifth in the league. 3.8 assists a game at a Detroit Country Day, then Lalu Mir in Indiana before going to Eastern Kentucky and finding his way to the loveliest village on the plains. Cardwell now back on KJ Williams. Man, the shooting of LSU. I'm sure has Matt McMahon thinking, what in the world are we doing? Four for 20 to start this game. Part of his tie to shot selection, part of his tie to Auburn's active hot switch outs. But you have got to get Auburn moving, Tom, and try to attack Auburn off of a closeout. Two for nine from three, one for seven at the rim. Can't find their sweet spot. It's a flex cut to isolation for Flanagan to get him to that right shoulder. Got him for a hook, right? Yep. And that's the first on Allen Flanagan. He's been big for Auburn, though, in four straight games and double figures. And he catches the ball right there on that low block off of that flex action. Bruce Pearl can use big guards as that cutter, and now they become a post-up threat. Flanagan had 10 points in their matchup last year. He and Wendell Green both had big games against LSU. Ball lost on his way up by Cam Hayes. Shot clock at six. Hannibal. Hannibal. Nowhere to go. 
I saw Auburn recently against Arkansas a couple of weeks ago, and they simply packed in a 2-3 zone, dared Arkansas to shoot over the top of it, and the Razorbacks couldn't get to the rim. Now, this is man, but it's very similar in that LSU just keeps running into dead ends. Yeah, and it's going to continue to shrink because of LSU's shooting numbers that you've talked about. And Auburn, look what they do now defensively. And I, I think I know they are very good at guarding the bounce, getting their elbows, Tom, by their ears and showing their hands. And any contact that occurs might be with their chest. But they don't do a lot of fouling in one-on-one -on -one with their hands. They're very well schooled. Like I said, they keep the ball on the side as well as anybody in the SEC. I hate that the folks at home couldn't see you actually put your elbows by yeah. your ears when you're discussing it. If you show me doing it, please don't have the camera behind me <laughs> for different reasons that we'll break down later in the show. <laughs> Here's Flanagan. That's a three. Oh, wow. yeah. Confident is Alan Flanagan getting closer and closer back to that pre-Achilles form. Man, the step back and the elevation straight up was really well done. A lot of guys step back in the fade. His step back was pure up and down in a phone booth. Handful of people watching right now wondering what a phone booth is, Jimmy. That's true, too. <laughs> and an LSU turnover. They're second. Watch Flanagan. He jabs with the right and then steps back into his shot. The jab, boom, actually jab with his left and step back. But once he steps back, Tommy steps back on balance. So it's a quick move, boom. But on balance now, straight up, straight down, really well done by 22 in orange. So they used to have these things called pay phones. Yep. If you had a quarter, maybe back in the day a dime, you could step into the phone booth, put your money in, call your friends. Yeah. There was no Instagram on those pay phones. Oh, ask for directions. <laughs> That's right. Right? <laughs> Where's the nearest map store? Auburn leads LSU by double digits. Under four to go here in the first half from Baton Rouge. At all right now, a lot of that is Auburn just staying between them and the basket. There's been some missed bunnies. They got to do a better job of moving the ball, shifting that Tigers defense. I think America wants to know, Tom Hart, last Wednesday was an all analyst hour uh, in, in Arkansas. When's the all play by play hour with you and Ravi? <laughs> it is a fantastic question. If I could get Ravi off the golf course, we'd make it happen. <laughs> but then it's not going to happen. <laughs> He's not coming off the golf course. Hey, Kim Mulkey's in the house. She knows what winnings look like. Her, her team is 18 and 0. And number three, Arkansas plays host to Arkansas at 9 Eastern Thursday night, part of an SEC Network women's doubleheader. Before that, number one, South Carolina, also 18 and 0, 6 and 0 in the league, takes on Vandy. Kim Mulkey brought in Angel Reese from Maryland, Jimmy. She's got 18 consecutive double doubles. The LSU school record is Sylvia Fowles had 19 of them. Well, they're putting 80 on people on a regular basis. And if you look at you watch Kim Mulkey's teams play, they get that ball side to side. They get the defense in rotation. And they seldom attack on the first side of the floor. So LSU's men's teams need to learn from that right now. As Auburn comes out in the zone. Ace Miller settles for another long three. You've got to get Auburn in some type of defensive rotations by driving the ball to the paint, get a kick, get a rotation, a second drive, and you cannot continue to miss shots around the rim. LSU now one out of six in this game on layups and dunk attempts. Green off the mark. It's been four and a half minutes since LSU has made a field goal, but Auburn finds its miss. Tom, you cannot quick shot your way out of a drought. You got to work, and LSU has to compete on the offensive end against a very good Auburn defense. Green left wow. short. Nice Cardwell. effort. Well, second that, effort counts. It's a third offensive rebound on that trip down the floor. Where's the effort by LSU? Because Cardwell missed a dunk, got the ball, and dunked again. Man, this is a this is a warning sign for Matt McMahon and his guys. You got guys backing up instead of. Winning the collision at the at the rim, they back away from the collision, and Cardwell makes them pay. Alabama on Saturday against LSU had 32 second chance points on 20 offensive rebounds. Justice Williams in the paint, will shovel inside, and an LSU turnover. He's trying to get it to Sean Phillips. Great example. Justice Williams got a piece of the paint, but instead of kicking it out, he tried to force another tough one. 
Katie Johnson for three, and it's a 12 nothing Auburn run. You've heard me say this before. The bad shot bone is connected to the bad defense bone. And you continue to take bad shots. You get your dauber down. You don't get your defensive fight up. And all of a sudden, it's a 28 to 13 game. LSU 0 for its last six. Three turnovers in the last five and a half minutes. KJ Williams got it to roll home. Well, a, a penetrating dribble by by Trey Hannibal, but he didn't settle himself for a tough two. He gave it up for a really easy two. And now LSU changes defense to try to change the complexion of the game a little bit. It's a high 1-3-1. One, one. You can smack it up top with a back screen and get numbers going downhill for Auburn if you want. Face up. Kick to Flanagan. He's cut off. Shot like a three, and he slips through. That's twice now. Back-to-back -back possessions. LSU has shown no fight with a ball. Fightings. LSU has shown no fight with a ball five feet and down close to the rim. Williams has made two threes. Puts it on the floor this time, and draws the foul. KJ Williams is leading LSU in this one. He's got 12 of their 17 with a chance to make it a three point play. I do like KJ Williams in the middle third. You come out with a bad closeout and you lunge like Jalen Williams. Watch the lunge by Williams. Uh, what the, this is the end of the play. But all bad defensive plays, Tom, for the most part, they start with a bad closeout. A lunge, a lean, getting on a shoulder too high. Williams read the bad closeout, got him downhill. A.J. Williams mentioned coming out of Murray State where he went head-to-head -head with Janai Broom, one off three head-to-head -head matchups when they played last year, including in the OVC title game. This one tilted towards Broom and the Tigers with a 13-point lead, minute left and a half. Where does Auburn want to go against his own? Well, right there at the nail where Williams, number two in orange is. And that's a tough one. That's the shot that LSU wants you to take against that 1-3-1. One, one. A guarded 25-footer. Hannibal got caught and is able to draw the foul. 45 seconds left. It's just almost automatic. A bad shot leads to bad defense transition. J.D. Johnson right here. Dancing with the ball. No defense urgency. Just lets him measure it. And then Flanagan goes inside, starts out of the corner, coming to his left, and just pivots his way right to the front of the rim with no resistance, no urgency, no fight back. Tom, it's an LSU team that's lost four in a row. I expected their hair to be on fire in this game. So far has not been the case. They can get it corrected. Yep. Second half to go, but some warning signs for Matt McMahon and his guys to talk about it half. If there's a positive on the LSU side, it's Auburn's foul trouble. Three starters, Flanagan, Broom and Williams have each committed two fouls apiece. The free throw coming for Trey Hannibal. All of his points, all five have come from the free throw line. Williams tried to find Cardwell and found Leo Borman. Here's Johnson. The chair is hitting the flush by Williams. It's always the weak side cutter off a penetrating dribble that you have to be concerned with. And Williams is such a good cutter. He's really grown in that part of his game from last year to this year as an aggressive off the ball score. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds left in the half. Hannibal looking for Williams, not posting up. Hannibal's going to drive on his own. Tried to reverse and got it in. He's just having to force his way, though, because the offense never got the ball side to side. That was just all pure brute strength by number zero in white to create something out of nothing to get it back to an 11-point game. Cold shooting for LSU. Auburn's defense has been sensational tonight. Our score at the half, Auburn 32-21. Let's get you to ESPN Studios alongside Sean Farnham. Here's our fearless leader, Kevin Connors. Tom Hart, thank you very much. And by the way, if you think that's poor shooting in the first half, stick around. We've got that beat. Critical game for Virginia Tech and the ACC. 
one in five in conference play. Virginia winners of five of six. Steph Curry and now Sean Farnham rubbing off on Armand Franklin. Yeah, a little uh, touch from beyond the arc here. Look, Virginia Tech actually went on a on a quick run, like 11 up and run, and it looked like they were going to take control of this game after the hot start by Virginia. This was a three-pointer that ended up tying it, but after that, it's pretty much been all Virginia. They have executed. They have been aggressive. They have found ways to attack the paint. 26 points in the paint. Check out Reese Beekman right there throwing it down. Speaking of attacking the paint, Steph's enjoying that 40-31. The Who's in front at the half. 14th ranked TCU in Morgantown. Sean, how has West Virginia slowed an up-tempo Frogs team? Well, TCU has kind of slowed themselves down a little bit. Eight turnovers in the first half of this game that have led to 12 points for West Virginia. But it's a very balanced attack uh, for Bobby Huggins' team. They, they got four guys with over five points in this game. They're sharing the basketball. They're forcing TCU to chase. And when you chase, you open up space around the rim, get offensive putbacks, second chance points. Uh, everything has been in the favor of the first half here for West Virginia. Playing there in the Coliseum and up by 14 on TCU. Number 15, UConn just one and four in their last five. Danny Hurley out with COVID. So Luke Murray and Tom Moore co-coaching the team. Jordan Hawkins having a sensational year. Rob Lemley is our producer on tonight's show. And I was like, hey, man, you guys are rolling here in the first half. You guys are up 14. You got to feel good about where you're at. But if you're a UConn fan right now, you understand that no lead is really safe. Seton Hall has come out here in the second half. And UConn's intensity at the defensive end of the floor has dipped dramatically here in the second half. Seton Hall shooting 8 of 12 and outscoring them 19 to 9 in the early stages of this second half. And they have eaten away this lead. Impressive run. Jordan Hawkins, big time three, but moments ago in transition. Here come the Pirates. And a throw down right there. That might have been Casey and Defo. This is why our producer in my ear is going, ah. ah three point game. I feel you, Lem. In front, Sean Farnham, Kevin Connors here in studio. No real flow for LSU in the first half. How do they change that in the second half? They got to move the ball. They got to trust each other. And, and right now, I mean, it, Auburn is is switching. And when you switch, a lot of coaches have been talking about this. I talked to Mark Few about this. When you're switching so much defensively, when you do switch, it, it really starts to limit your playbooks. And it comes down to your matchup, your ability to to get the defense to chase and switch ball sides. They haven't done that at all in the first half. Auburn did a nice job executing, though. Speaking of offensive struggles, Florida in action tonight. What do you want me to say about this one? Well, I want you to explain how a team went two for 26 from the field in 20 minutes. It's, it, it, it's really tough to explain. <laughs> I mean, it, this has been really bad offense by Florida. You'd like to say, hey, it's all Texas A&M, and Texas A&M's off to a great start, obviously, 4-0 in conference play. But this has a lot to do with Florida and the fact that they just cannot score the basketball uh, and the fact that they just cannot score the basketball at all in this game. Two of 26 shooting. Seven of six, uh, 7.6 percent shooting in the first half. When we come back, these guys can score. We're going to recap some of the dynamite performances already in college basketball this week. We'll get that victory. Had Bill Self not called the timeout, maybe he finishes with 41, and Kansas would have finished with the win. But an unbelievable performance out of Jalen Wilson, who just solidified, solidified himself as one of the best in the country. Brandon Miller went for 31 on Saturday, Sean, and then 30 last night in the win at Vandy. Casey, it's, it's the consistency in what you see out of this young man. He is the best freshman in all of college basketball. We've been telling you that since the PK tournament back during Feast Week, Thanksgiving time. Uh, nothing has dropped off from there. His consistency, his release on that shot, just silly. But how about shooting 60% from the field in both of those two 30-point scoring efforts? It's a big reason why Alabama is one of the top teams in all of college basketball. He's got three 30-point games already. And then last night, Oscar Shibwe, 37-24. and 24. A week ago this time, what were we saying about Kentucky? Oh, my gosh, gloom and doom. The sky is falling. Uh, nothing was falling last night except for Oscar Shibwe just dominating down low in the paint. 37 points and 24, as you mentioned, KC. Monster numbers for the reigning national player of the year. They need him to be this dominant figure. Everybody else kind of feeds off of him. Last night in the second half in particular, he answered the call. But I think uh, the, it, Shibway won the award last year, player of the year this year. 
I think Tom Izzo might agree with you that it's Zach Eady. Yeah, I, I think this is like Tiger Woods back at the U.S. Open when they started engraving the trophy on Saturday. I think this is where Zach Eady is at. I think he's just had that big of a year and 32 and 17. Those numbers don't happen inside that building on the road against Michigan State and the Tom Izzo coach team, let alone the game winner and how well he was able to execute down the stretch. It is his second 30 plus point, 15 plus rebound game in Big Ten Conference play. No other Big Ten players done that in the last 15 years. Texas 23 to 12, our halftime score. Really the story, AM's defense. Florida had just two made field goals, and Julius Marble uh, getting the job done in that first half with 12 points already. He truly was the difference. Pat Bradley, Roy, Phil Fox courtside here inside of a rocking Reed Arena. And PB, I don't know what you do to try to change up the mojo. You tell me. You're the expert. Well, I, I think for Florida, we get back to playing through Colin Castleton. Even though they're pushing him out to the top of the key, he gets, gets so much defensive attention. You can still run things off of him, and they were successful a little bit early on. But, boy, Texas A&M's defense, man, ruin the day. They just swarm all over you, suffocate you defensively. And we mentioned Julius Marble, 12 points in the first half. Getting the job done inside. Also had a deep shot, a long two at one point. Yeah, well, he has been a safety net, a calming force on the half-court offense. Throw it to him, slows the game down, and a &M has been able to get the majority of their points outside of a three by Hefner and a marble jump shot. Everything has been in the paint for Texas A&M, and it's showing. Meanwhile, Colin Castleton, the good news is seven rebounds. The bad news, one of two at the line, didn't get a ton of touches. And a look at the stats in the first 20 minutes, only attempted two field goals. Well, and it's been that swarming defense, right? He's seen double teams at times, even before he's caught the ball. Two Texas A&M guys are making sure he doesn't touch it. If he does, got to get rid of it quick. That's why it's going to be key. Florida player movement cuts, even play around, maybe interchange across that three-point line as well. Florida's 12 first-half points, the fewest by an SEC opponent against Texas A&M since the Aggies joined the league back in 2012. Well, you just see how strong... Julius Marble is on that drive. He puts it on the floor. Castleton is right there. Basically gets bumped off him and gets an actually good look at the rim. Henry Coleman just picked up his third foul. Hasn't been his night thus far. Just trying to stay on the floor for a minute. Here's Castleton against Marble. So right here. That's, that's an action now. If I'm Myron Jones, I'm curling off that tight trying to get in the lane of the SEC logo. Richard open for a moment. No. Boy, Castleton with a head nod directed yeah. Richard to that point. And Richard could not finish. Marble okay. shoved by Colin Castleton. And that's a foul. So there, there are going to be nights like this, right? The jump shot doesn't travel. Sometimes it doesn't fit in the suitcase. Uh, right here, good pass by Wade Taylor, the fourth, thrown up to his big fella who is impressed today. He has lived in the paint, Julius Marble. He's given his teammates a big, big target to throw to. Taylor shot block. Dennis, the putback. That's his offensive awareness right there by Dexter Dennis. Good things happen when you play around the rim. Full court pressure. Trapping pressure extended once again. Got to find a way to get to Castleton there, although you see Garcia shading towards him. Fudge. That's a three. They're going to say it's a long two. So a field goal, just the third made by the Gators tonight. And it's 25 to 14. Garcia could not answer. Pops out to Myron Jones. Gonna be a quick pass right there. Pass with a double team in a hurry. The skip to loft it. Back to Fudge. Well, the defense has been suffocating. Fudge couldn't get the bounce. Hit the deck and a foul called against Texas A&M. Yeah, Alex Fudge following his own shot. He's a made the difference a couple times on the offensive glass in the first half. 
thought maybe Florida could steal a few buckets here and there. I mean, you look at it and you say, because of Texas A&M, they such a great half-court defense. They strong, they communicate well, they close distance. For Florida, how do you create a couple of buckets here and there in transition on the glass? Anywhere. Anywhere. And, and, and it will add up because, you know, Texas A&M, Florida's have a good job defensively. They've only got 25 points to score. Castleton split the double team, delivered to Jones. Spacing here. Good pass. The spin, the double team, the jump hook, the put back by Richard, who skied for the flush. Again, offensive glass. That was a good pass by Lofton, but a good seal by Castleton, right? I'm not saying it's easy going against Julius Marble, okay, but you gotta fight for good position. Taylor open for a minute, top of the key. Who wants it? Castleton taps it out, and it goes to Dennis. Anderson Garcia, by the way, just picked up his third personal. He's on the bench currently with Henry Coleman, who has three fouls as well. Radford's wide open. And a fudge on the elevator for the board. <laughs> and that was a good push by him. Good step in Jones shot. for three, and here comes the Gators. 25 to 19 after that triple. And a foul called inside. Here's that. Just see all the attention Colin Castleton gets. Will Richard, any play, straight to the rim. Myron Jones steps into it, been shooting it well. However, that comes off that transition. Defense good. Strong defensive rebound by Alex Fudge. Leads the break himself. Steps in. Trail man three. Veteran officiating crew Terry Oglesby, Mike Nance, Lee Cassell. They're reviewing that last sequence. In the meantime, it's a 7 nothing run over the last 1 minute and 41 seconds in favor of the Gators. Their real first true offensive yeah. production and streak of the night. Amazing they're only down six. Yeah, it is. Well, what they did was they were able to get it to Colin Castleton one time at the top of the key in a post-up situation because, again, most teams, A&M, they're either doubling him or shading towards him. Just move, cut. He's going to find you. They had one more look under the rim to see if there was a foul as the three-pointer was made by Jones. We'll have a look as well. Extracurricular activity. Well, you saw the forearm by Marble. Castleton had his back turned against him. I don't know there was enough there to warrant an infraction. We'll await the official ruling as well. And they're going to call a foul, looks like. That's Marble. That's his second. So a big sequence here. You made a three. And you maintain possession, Pat. And this is what Florida was looking for. They just make a couple, open things up. And somehow it stays with the Gators. The bounce pass that ricocheted out. And just the simple passing lane that typically is available. And the collegiate basketball contest yeah, that, has not been there tonight, really, for either side. Right, and, that, and that's it. And that's where the physical and mental toughness comes in. Richard spins it high off the glass, in and out. Fudge couldn't claim the board. Taylor does. Twenty-six to twenty-two advantage for the Aggies on the glass tonight. Marble with a shove. They're going to say he was held first. That was good recognition. Wade Taylor had the opportunity to penetrate. But said, I see we, we've got Julius Marble on the block. Let's feed him the safety net. He's been the go-to guy in the first half. Foul was called on Jones. Marble's left open. Slot shot is pure. 27-19, Marble's got 14. You love the tempo of Wade Taylor, though. Just good change of speed, change of direction, always under control. Richard responds with a three, and the Gators starting to warm up. There hasn't been many of those 
open three-pointers <laughs> during this game. a and has been all over everything. Radford could not answer. Castleton clears. He's got eight rebounds. Chance to make it a one-possession game for Florida. That's a bit pretty, but the Gators are in it on the road. Richard, bit of a heat check. Dennis jumped high for it. Almost five minutes into the second half. Gators have scratched and clawed their way. They're back in it. Marble open again. Washington, an offensive rebound. Taylor. Castleton swatted that one out. And the under-16 media timeout. Well, Shooter, we talked about it last week in Athens. The Wednesday night heaters. We could use a couple of those here this evening. We'll tell you who's hot in the SEC coming up. And can coach with anybody out there. I, t I touched on it. Your instincts as a head coach at halftime is to address the major problem. And for LSU is their offense. And I'm sure Matt McMahon talked about it, but he said, but we have to change the game on the defensive end of the floor. So he's thrown three different looks at Auburn. They have trapped the ball some. Their fight level has risen up to an acceptable part. As a result, the rest of their game now is starting to flow, and this kid is a handful one-on-one. -on -one. Working on Jani Broom. Got a wow, poke got away. Yeah, got loose with the ball, did he not? And now Broom running the floor over the shoulder, and they'll count it. That's just the second bucket for Jani Broom. Both of them coming here in the second half, coming on a goal 10. There have been some greats who have played here at the PMAC and in Baton Rouge. And when we return, Jimmy will explain why sometimes bronze is better than gold. Here in Baton Rouge was his hometown, Bob Pettit, one of the all-time 50 top players to ever play in the NBA. He was an 11-time NBA All-Star. Bob Pettit, man, phenomenal around the rim. None better than Pistol Pete Maravich. Think about this, he averaged 44 points a game in college. There was no three-point line back then. He basically holds every NCAA basketball scoring record that we've ever had. We all grew up doing the Pistol Pete ball handling drills. One of my favorite players of all time, Pete Maravich. How about the great Shaq daddy, Shaquille O'Neal, number 33, all seven foot of him in the statue. National Player of the Year here at LSU and a four-time NBA champion, one of the best to ever play. The newest statue out front, Simone Augustus, phenomenal player, the number one pick in the 2006 WNBA draft, three-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time National Player of the Year, one of the best to ever do it, Simone Augustus. Jimmy, you make a great tour guide, but right now Auburn on a 7 0 run after Katie Johnson three. And the loose ball crowd by Wendell Green, my favorite Pistol Pete stat. He has a single game scoring mark as an opponent at eight different schools still. Yeah, still. But four tremendous statues out in front of the PMAC. Simone, how about Simone Augustus as a ninth grader? She was labeled next. Yeah, in the women's game, and man, did she deliver. And just a, the career that she had and how she changed the game. Kim Mulkey sitting over here behind us. You could talk to her for hours about some of the greats in the in the, in the women's game, but Simone Augusta is certainly right there with them. But, and those statues, you put those four up against anybody out there that could put four statues up outside their arena, right? That's legit. Uh, push from Flanagan in the back. It's Flanagan's third. By the way, Shaq's coach Dale is in the building as normal. 25 years as the head coach. A couple of Final Fours, four SEC championships with the great Dale Brown. Coach to 448 wins. Do you remember those Pete Maravich ball handling drills? Oh yeah, yeah. That's. I remembered them. I grew up on those things. Did you watch, have the VHS? Had the VHS videotapes. And would go out for hours and hours on my driveway trying to do all that stuff that Pete Maravich did. Man, what a nice isolation play call by Matt McMahon. Got Derek Fountain just spread out. And once he got the touch, he gets to that right paw. The offense starting to click because the defense has gotten hot for LSU in the second half. That was the first bucket of the night for Derek Fountain. 
LSU got a great defensive start to the half. What are you talking about those pistol P drills? And why not break them out? What's this one called? Well, that one's called dang. Because why? if you miss, it's dang. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called the crab dribble. Did that for hours and hours. I, I love this one. The, the blind catch, throw it up as high as you can, catch behind your back. Pete Maravich did it. And then this is hot hands, man, high, low. How high can you throw it and how low can you catch it? And we've all done those drills time and time again. I probably hadn't done them in 20 years, but, man, I grew up doing that Pete Maravich stuff. Here's Wendell Green. Got it. Dang. It dang indeed. He's yeah. into double <laughs> figures now. The lead back to double figures. It was funny. You were doing those drills uh, before the game tonight out on the floor. And a couple of the ushers walk over and go, oh, you're doing pistols drills, yeah, right? Yeah. They, everybody knows it. Williams going downhill oh, wow. and delivered that one to the first row. Well, Auburn has kind of righted the ship a little bit. Well, they have an 11-point lead at half. Now it's back to 10. And LSU's going to have to continue to score off of their defense. Their half-court offense still isn't quite as true and as pure as you'd like. Green with the hesitation and a blow by. Wasn't that well done. Green isn't really, he's not a jet, but his control of his speed, kind of like Terry Roberts last night from Georgia. Change of gear, stop and go, lift you with the eye, the eye fake and stay low and get by you. Tremendous. Talking about his fandom before the game. Here's Miller for three. He said, I just love watching college basketball. I find a game on. I'm going to watch that entire thing on my phone. I love to learn. I'm watching different coverages. Broom has it stripped away. And then Green oh, had his wow. steal and got laid out. That foul will go on Trey Hannibal. That was physical. 12-point Auburn lead. Well, you can teach an old dog new tricks, but you can't always perfect the old tricks if you're an old dog. Hey, Oops, hey look out. Please don't step on that ball, Jalen. <laughs> PM Plus. Tom and Jimmy, back to you in Baton Rouge. All right, Chris, thanks. Yeah, Djokovic continuing his quest for a record extending 10th Aussie Open title. They'll take the court at 3 a.m. exclusively on ESPN Plus. No green. Remember how good Auburn is out after timeouts under Bruce Pearl. Berman and one. He's such a solid, tough kid, Leo Berman. You know, walk on that Bruce Pearl has the confidence to call his number after an ATO. He works off of a pin down, then he comes right back off of a side step up screen to get him going downhill. He made a pull up jump shot in their last ball game from about 12 feet on that same side of the floor. Just a trusted, steady hand off the bench. Yeah, what I loved about him in the Mississippi State game is you referenced him being a walk on. He got in the game, and as soon as he got a touch, it went up. Absolutely. But he's not hesitating. Playing patient or timid. There are different levels of walk on. Yep. We can talk that if you want to. I'm an expert in that area. There's that ghost screen by Williams and Auburn just sniffed, has sniffed out all night long, not letting 12 and White get a free one. Hannibal with the pull up. Nice shot. But you live with Hannibal's pull up jump shots as opposed to letting him get downhill, get to the rim, and put fouls on your defense. We haven't seen much of Dylan Cardwell in the second half for Auburn. Here's Green in the paint, and he gets it to go. Cardwell was seen during the timeout standing up in the tunnel for Auburn, ostensibly being bothered by some physical ailment. Broom trying to poke it away. Time again. That last drive by Window Green was a physical, tough, strong. 5'10 guard. Watch him right here. I mean, there's some contact. The shot fake, and he gets his body into your body, and he's taking on a 6'3", 6'4 defender. But that move right there, 
to kind of the, the, the dribble hold, the shoulder yeah. hold. That's really well done by Window Green. We're talking about guys that he likes to watch from a basketball perspective because I really study Kyrie's finishes uh -huh. at the rim. He goes, of course, everybody watches Steph, but it was interesting. For a guy his size and his offensive mindset, he didn't mention, I like to watch Steph on offense or how he shoots or how he gets open. He said, I watch Steph for his leadership. And he's really grown in that area, Window Green has. And talking to Stephen Pearl today, I said, who's your toughest guy? And he said, we have two of them. Chris Moore, who's out right now with a shoulder injury. And Bruce Pearl has won two games without his toughest guy. But Stephen said, our next guy tonight is Window Green. And he said, everything he does is with full belief and guts and strength. There's no fear in this kid. When you're small at this level, Tom, you have to be able to do a few things. Can you make an open jump shot? Wendell Green can. Can yep. you guard your spot? He can. And can you go blow by and make good plays through contact? And Green has grown in all those areas, and his voice is now starting to be the same voice as Bruce Pearl. Pearl tells a story that they originally discovered Wendell Green Jr. when they were at a high school tournament watching Sharif Cooper. Now, Green would go from that high school tournament onto Eastern Kentucky and then eventually be wooed to leave Eastern to come to Auburn. But that's when they first saw him, and he got on their radar. Yeah. Auburn continues to run offense high. They really, Auburn, do a tremendous job of lifting you defensively and putting a lot of pressure on you to cover back cuts and drives. Katie Johnson fighting for the rebound, trying to tie it up. And they're going to say it was a little too much. Got him on the forearm. KD picks up his first personal. Wendell Green in their four SEC wins has been sensational. Closed the game against Arkansas. Had a season high against Ole Miss and closed against Mississippi State. In that Arkansas game as well, he said, I, I play well for Bruce Pearl because I know he trusts me. They came out after struggling against after he struggled against Georgia and the first play against Arkansas was for Wendell and it turned into a four point play. And how do you play on the road as a guard is the best I think check mark that you have to check off yeah. in my eyes. And this kid has been tough today and another bad closeout by Auburn. Hannibal got to the rim because of the bad closeout just couldn't finish. Square him up. That will be said a hundred times in a game and in film sessions. You talk about guarding the ball on the perimeter. Hannibal wow. got around Cardwell. See how he bounced the ball back, Hannibal did. So now it becomes a downhill. He has space to get momentum at you in the mismatch. Just brute strength. LSU now back to that extended 1-3-1 and they will trap out of it. Auburn 8 of 20 from deep. Traore with the rebound or had it for a moment, I should say, and LSU found it. Here's Justice Williams. Well, Trey Hannibal with the spin. And then they were all over Jalen Reed, who got fouled in the process. And two free throws coming for Reed. Cardwell with his second personal. Reed is 48% from the line on the season. Saturday on ABC, it's a major Pac-12 matchup. Fifth ranked UCLA has won 13 straight. Bruins head to Tucson to face off against number 11 Arizona, coming off of a blowout loss Saturday at Oregon. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. And that's a tough defensive team that Mick Cronin has, to so no surprise with his background. I believe the Bruins are. 17th in the country right now in adjusted offense, and they are fourth in adjusted defense. And he's got some dudes that just flat out climb up into your jersey. How about Jaime Hawkins? You're talking about player of the year candidates? Yeah, I, I think he's I think he's further down the list than some other guys think right now. I think it's Shaq Eady since we're in <laughs> LSU. Shaq Eady's to lose right now, but Man, Sheboy made up a lot of ground last night with a monster game. Jalen Wilson, 38 points in a loss. He's right there as well in the conversation. Fountain had the block and then a foul and they'll count it. And 
This will put Jalen Williams at the free throw line. What did Matt McMahon tell us today about 12-15? Our first shot defense has been good enough in this league. Our second shot defense has not. And there it is. You can't clean up the miss. Auburn is such a hungry team when the ball's on the glass on both ends, but especially on the offensive glass. I thought he started with, oh, you guys again? Yeah, he did, because we were there last Saturday in Tuscaloosa. That thing was over, man, at the, what, four or five minute mark of the, of the game, actually. Jalen Williams at the free throw line. At 14 against Florida a few games ago, then really nice first half against Mississippi State. 15 of his 21 coming right out of the locker room. Tom, you look at this league, Tom, and clearly now there's some separation between Alabama and everyone else. I think Alabama is playing the best basketball of anyone in the country. You know, I still would have Tennessee in that second slot, but from there, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's a, it's a real toss-up right now between Kentucky, Auburn, T Texas A&M. It will be right there in that fight as well. Williams picks up the miss and puts it in. It should be noted. Texas A&M is still undefeated in the league. And right now they've got a two-point lead at home against Florida midway through the second half at Reed Arena. I told you, how do you judge a guard at the end of the day? How they play on the road in conference play is a great film to watch. When the game got tight, what does Wendell Green do? He gets separation for a 5'10 kid from distance. He's slippery and smart in the middle third ball screen action, and he's tougher physically than he looks. Nothing soft about number one in orange. His work has really jumped out tonight to me. Clock running out on Ellis shoot 345 to play. Tigers have missed seven of their last eight. AJ Williams off the heel. Fountain got it and used the timeout. Been almost three minutes since LSU has made a bucket. Well, Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers may not have a star, but they are just piling up the wins. Jabbar and Walker Kessler helped last couple of years and tied for the longest streak in the top 25 Associated Press poll.